Yo, what's good? We're back with a new book, literally got delivered today, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, an alternative treatment for greater personal happiness and contentment. Um, long story short, this is a book generally looking at um, anxiety and sort of all the, well, at least in the blurb it said it was talking about anxiety and sort of dealing with it. And I know a lot of, some of my students deal with anxiety. Um, I know a lot of people deal with anxiety, so I'm assuming that the language is going to be a bit tense. So my plan is at the end of each chapter to give just my own kind of breakdown, if necessary. If the language isn't that bad, then I probably won't have to. Um, but we're going to go through it. We're going to see if it's helpful. Um, I'm probably going to go bit by bit, not overload each episode with too much of the book. Chapter 1. Defining Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. So, sorry, just a quick start. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, breaking that down. Cognitive mind thinking, the way it works. And Behavioral Therapy is like the therapy of our behavior, like breaking down sort of what we can do surrounding our behavior. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy is not something that you try on yourself. It's just not going to happen. You have to work with a trained therapist or counselor. While you do the heavy lifting as far as your personal beliefs and your responses to the outside world go, you need expert guidance. You need somebody who knows what they're doing, who knows how to instruct you. They must have been around the block a few times, so they know what to anticipate. This is one common misconception about Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT for short. A lot of people think that if they just read a book on CBT, they will know the ins and outs of this therapy, of this alternative therapy system, and they can pretty much treat themselves. There's more to recovery through CBT than just buying a book and learning techniques. You have to actually put them to use. This is the difficult part. You have to keep using these techniques no matter how inconvenient they, may, they might be. You have to keep practicing them no matter how busy you get. Given these logistical considerations, it's no surprise that a lot of people think that you need specially trained counsellors or psychiatrists to go through a CBT program. Most of the time, the most valuable thing these professionals bring to the table is that they give you a formal structure for CBT. You can do it yourself once a professional has provided you with a formal structure. You just have to give yourself the time and the space and you need to commit to doing CBT consistently. It's very hard to get out from under your mental habits if you are trying to do CBT alone. You need to be under, sorry, you need to be under the proper guidance of an experienced therapist who not only understands how it works, but how its principles can be tweaked to apply to your personal situation, but also knows how to measure success. You have to understand that this is a results-based therapy. You don't just undergo CBT because you're, because you're just trying to feel better. Who knows what that means? It's too subjective. When... I'm already not too happy with this book. Um, I'm fairly early on and there's a grammar error. I don't like how they're trying to sort of get out of explaining something and dealing with it by saying you need to be with a therapist. But we're going to see how it goes. When you working with a trained cognitive behavioral therapist, you are made aware of how your interpretations of the things happening in your life impact your feelings, your interpretation of reality, and ultimately your behavior. The main goal of cognitive behavioral therapy is not just to feel good or to feel at peace. Medication can do that. Being with the right people can do that. Instead, CBT aims for something higher. It seeks to teach you how to effectively interpret life in such a way that you remain positive, empowered, and in control. In other words, with the proper guidance, CBT can help you handle your life in a very different way. People normally seek cognitive behavioral therapy if they feel that their life is spiraling out of control. They feel that they're stuck. It's as if they're watching a movie of their life and they can't do anything about it except sit back and let things happen. When properly implemented, cognitive behavioral therapy enables you to reclaim your personal power over your life. Believe it or not, everything that happens in your life is ultimately your responsibility. 
A lot of people try to run away from this truth. In fact, to a lot of people, this is quite inconvenient and uncomfortable. Unfortunately, regardless of how we feel, the truth is still the truth. We are always in control of how we respond to the truth, and this response is never neutral. It always has an impact on what we feel and ultimately what we do. Cognitive behavioral therapy focuses on how people make sense of, of their world in terms of their interpretation. This is the foundation of cognitive behavioral therapy. When you change the interpretation, you change how people emotionally respond to things. And this can lead to a profound impact on how they behave. For example, somebody who is suffering from low self-esteem usually looks at a situation from a perspective of doubt. They don't think they're good enough. They don't think they're good looking enough. They don't think people will like them. They don't think they will belong. So on and so forth. Since this is how they interpret the signals people and situations give them, it is no surprise that they tend to miss out on opportunities or avoid social settings. They doubt themselves so much. They feel that people will not like them. They feel uncomfortable. This is not just happening in their heads, because when somebody has such low self-esteem and they're doubting themselves all the time, it can have physical effects. You can feel like you're about to throw up. You can feel like you're shaking. You want to curl up into a ball and assume the fetal position. Unfortunately, people with low self-esteem think, think that this is natural. They've responded to the world this way for so long that they think it's part of them. Some even say that it's just who they are. It's part of their personality. No, it's not. Cognitive behavioral therapy goes to the roots of the problem. The root of the problem is not that you're feeling ugly or that you assume you are going to screw things up the moment you are given any kind of responsibility. Instead, it goes straight to the real issue, your low self-esteem. Why is that? Why do you automatically feel that people are not going to like you? Why do you automatically fear social settings or any kind of opportunity you have to learn? How are you looking at your situation? Are there any alternative interpretations? A crucial part of CBT is the identification of negative thought patterns. Patients have to be clear about their thought process. CBT doesn't assume that there's something wrong with you. Instead, you are first walk through the process of clearly describing how you view yourself, how you interpret reality, and how you find yourself in certain situations. There's no right or wrong answer here. The focus is objective truth. In other words, it's all about accuracy. The next step is to look at the thought patterns involved and understand that this is just one possible train of thought. For example, say you go into a bar. You see an attractive member of the opposite sex, or same sex if you're into that, turn around, look at you and laugh. If you have low self-esteem, you will automatically assume that person is laughing at you. Are there alternative interpretations? A CBT therapist will step you through the alternatives and help you process that memory in such a way that it doesn't lead to negative thoughts and ultimately negative actions. Maybe in that memory there was someone, somebody cracking a joke behind you or making faces. Perhaps that good looking person was looking at that person behind you. It doesn't have to be about you. As long as, as, long as the alternative interpretations are supported by facts, the CBT therapist can help you come up with a healthier approach to processing social information so that you get out from under your social phobia. Speaking of phobias, CBT is quite effective in this field. Take the case of an individual with dental phobia. This person is deathly afraid of visiting the dentist. We're not just talking about root canals here, we're talking about just regular cleaning. A CBT practitioner would ask this person about their past experiences of going to the dentist. The patient would then go through story after story until they get to the traumatic incident that led to an unhealthy association of the dentist with pain. It may have happened when the patient was 5 years old. The therapist would then work with the patient to cut that mental connection between the dentist and pain. In other words, they help the person realize that what happened in the past can stay in the past. 
Just because they had a traumatic experience that one time doesn't necessarily mean that all people are going to dentists suffer the same experience. They may have just been unlucky that day. Often the further we are from the memory, the more we blow it out of proportion. We exaggerate. It may turn out that when, a, that when the patient was a kid, they just experienced slight pain. But as they got older, they remember the pain as something far worse. An expert cognitive behavioral therapist can help patients go through this process successfully. Okay, so we're going to cut this episode there. Tomorrow we're, we'll be in with chapter two, the history of cognitive behavioral therapy. Admittedly, that's a mouthful. So chapter one didn't sound like it was too difficult. Essentially, we're just looking at the fact that, um, the fact that <laughs> they're trying to push us to make sure that you get professional help from someone. Um, if you're young enough, most schools have counselors on site. It's never a bad thing to see a counselor and just to speak to somebody. If you're old enough, I suppose it doesn't hurt to go see a, you know, a therapist. Um, I understand there was a stigma about that once upon a time, but that isn't around as much thanks to America and the fact that everyone there has therapists. So, thank you all for watching. See you next time.